Hello again, it's now the fifth episode and Lise, my partner, is joining me to help me through the next few weeks and months of the journey. Um, we're now a month after the diagnosis and the first month's worth of targeted therapy called Tegriso has been delivered to our house. However, Peter, you weren't able to start taking them straight away. Why was that? That was so frustrating. So what had happened was the, the, um, tegri the uh, steroids have all kinds of effects and the one that was affecting me the most at the time, unfortunately, was diarrhoea, quite bad diarrhoea. And so I was putting weight on because of the steroids, but losing it <laughs> because of the diarrhoea. And they wouldn't let me start taking the tablet immediately because of the danger that it would go straight through my system. So they waited. And so in the end, after they did some tests on me um, on, uh, to check whether there was anything particularly wrong, anything other than the uh, steroids, and waited about a week. And then finally I negotiated that it was getting good enough that I could start taking them. Yeah. Uh, so that was on the 19th of January, actually. You were finally cleared to start. Um, and then, do you remember, we had lots and lots of effects, lots and lots of side effects. Do you remember it, that time? Yes, it was a difficult time, that, because the steroids were coming down. So I'd started on 16 milligrams a day, and they were trying to get me down to zero. And I was probably down to four or two. But there's a lag on the way it comes down, and eventually the adrenal gland switches back on again. This is a cortisol steroid, not anabolic. And so I was, the steroids were coming down. The Tegrisid usually takes a couple of weeks to work, but it wasn't quite sure whether that was working, etc. And um, so it wasn't sure whether the side effects of the Tegriso or the remainder of the cortisol steroid or whatever. So it was just a confusing time. So I was still putting weight on. I was, <laughs> despite the diarrhea, I was um, not sleeping very well. And I, I suspect, and at least would be able to answer this, my mood swing was still happening. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was one of the uh, more uh, tricky uh, effects of the uh, steroids, actually. But then also, remember, after about a week, the actually the side effects, the official side effects of the dr drug kicked in, which was problems with skin, nail and mouth. Yeah, so dry skin. Funnily enough, not too bad. It was just on my left arm, as it turns out. Nails, that's continued. And even nine months later, I still have nail problems where they'll, they'll break rather easily. And mouth ulcers. But again... These are these are, were probably the Tegriso side effects at this point, but all you know, relatively minor. Uh, the, the any any form of therapy, particularly chemotherapy, has has side effects. At the time, it was annoying, but wasn't. It didn't really affect my lifestyle. Mm. And then in early February, we had the first regular visit to the oncologist. They are set to happen once a month, and the scans every three months. Um, do you remember that first consultation? I do, and that was a bit frustrating because at that point I wasn't quite sure um, whether it was still growing or not, or whether the Tegresa was having some effect. Probably not, because it was only two weeks into it. And so there was a discussion about whether to, um, how often the scans should be. And the scan, I've spent a lot of time over, and we'll talk about this in a separate talk later, the frequency of scans. Um, obviously scans cost money, uh, whether MRI or CT, and uh, MRI if anybody's had one, it's, it's very noisy, it's, it's quite claustrophobic, but it doesn't actually affect the body, whereas CT is a dose of x-rays, so they don't want to do those too often. And they weren't going to do any of the blood tests again, because gradually the amount of circulating uh, tumour DNA uh, was reducing. So I had a discussion about that, but it was mostly that, and the next few um, months when we were talking to him was about side effects and progress. Mm. Um, I think it was... A, it was about three or four weeks later, when we did first start to notice some health stability. That's right. So I've still, so we're talking about mid-February here. So we're about a couple of months after uh, sort of initial diagnosis of the the brain tumor, and, and st I'm still deteriorating physically. I'm still having problems with breathing. I, I had still hadn't started cycling again, etc. But I was beginning to become more positive. Um, probably more <laughs> easy to spend time with, etc. <laughs> Um, also in February, uh, we had that chat with um, the, uh, the, the um, clinical lead of, at AstraZeneca for the Tigris zone. That was really interesting, wasn't it? Uh, it was very interesting, yeah. So I also had my fourth COVID jab, just to add that. So because the, the, there's a potential level of immune 
uh, immunosuppression here, I, um, I had a jab, which didn't affect me, but at least it had it, because there's still quite a lot of COVID around. But then through a contact here, because AstraZeneca, the headquarters moved down from Cheshire to Cambridge, and I know somebody there who's fairly senior, um, and he connected me with the guy who's clinical lead for the drug in Denmark. And we spent half an hour, Lisa and I, talking to him about the drug. And I think it's probably quite unusual he speaks to patients um, or users of the drug. He was really open to discuss about the trials. He also mentioned that possibly as many as 500,000 people have either been on the drug or on the drug. So there's a lot of us, you know, the data collected from that. Hmm. Uh, and we also talked about uh, the options for treatment once the cancer mutates away from Tegriso, didn't we? We started to do that, and that's been a subject of a lot of research. Again, I'll talk about this some other time, about what's next. The issue is that Tegriso has only been on the market in the UK for two or three years, and it's a phenomenally um, well affecting, so the effects are really positive on, on my type of cancer. So they haven't had enough time really to do enough trials to work out what's next. I do know, and it depends slightly on which mutation it ends up with, and again I'm using the word when rather than if, and of course I want it to be if, <laughs> and so the actual the next stage, which will be almost certainly intravenous chemo and uh, with a limited life, we'll come to some of the prognosis at some of the later episode. Um, we just don't know what's happening. We can't really have that conversation until we until it starts to mutate. Mm. Um, and then by about early March, uh, we're finally able to stop the steroids altogether and the picture is becoming a bit clearer and you're really starting to be more stable then aren't you? That's right yes in fact the, 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 I stopped the steroids sometime during February so I was on it on that for a couple of months or so I put on 15 kilos in that time which was a lot and I've, since then I've lost about half that 15 kilos which is really tough to take it off mainly because I'm not very good at not eating enough uh, or not even stopping myself eating so mostly stable feeling a lot better um, I learnt about the word scanxiety in this month, uh, scan anxiety, and that was, um, <laughs> so and in fact everybody goes through that, and I've had that just in the last few days after my um, last, uh, after the th third set of scans. But generally my fitness is going up and down, I, I'm really not sure, I'm not running yet, but I am cycling, so it's a sort of funny old time, but everything's starting to get better. So at this point I think we'll stop this episode and, um, and, and meet you again soon. Thank you.